Hello everyone, it's Jama Malmi. If you've been looking for a solution to label the spine of your scrapbook so you know what's on the shelf, then you've come to the right place. Today I'm going to show you how I used heat transfer vinyl or HTV paired with my Cricut to create some labels for the side of my scrapbook with the year. You can do this on most any scrapbooks. Um, I've got a faux leather album here and so that's what I'm going to be using and I'm going to be sharing the settings that I used on my easy press and all that. The album that I'm using is close to my heart. Um, this is the album I use for all of my scrapbooks. It comes with these protective measures so that it doesn't get damaged in shipping. And um, it also came with shrink wrap around the outside for protection, but I already took that off. I use the D-Ring album because I scrap out of order and um, you know I like to take things in and out all the time. So this is what works for me. You can use a post bound album or any other faux leather album. You could probably also use leather or canvas and that type of album but that has not been tested for this video what I've tested for this video is just the faux leather you can add the HTV to the cover of your album as well but I'm gonna be doing the spine so if you are looking for a new album to do this with I do highly recommend the close to my heart album I'll have this linked down in the description below um, and just as for awareness the price of these is going up quite significantly on September 1st. So if this kind of thing is on your wish list, then uh, be sure to head over and order before September 1st. It goes up about $8 in US. So uh, let's go hop into Design Space and get started. So I have a blank canvas here in Design Space and the first thing I want to do is create the box to represent my spine because I'm going to put the text in and I want to see what it's going to look like proportionately. So I have a rectangle sized to two and a half inches wide by 13 inches tall. I'm going to add my text but first I want to color that rectangle in the lagoon color that my album is just to give me a better idea of the color that I want to use for my text. So I tried dark gray and then I'm duplicating that again and I'm trying a light gray and then I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to tr use a white and for the design space purpose I actually was playing with the light gray but in real life I decided to go with white as you saw in the beginning of this video. I knew I wanted the year to go sideways on the spine so I rotated it 270 degrees to make it look this way and then I just kind of played with the sizing until I liked the proportion. At this point, I was pretty close to one and a quarter inches tall, so I changed it to that because I, my mind likes a nice even number. <laughs> so I didn't want that like 0.213 or whatever, but you can do whatever looks good to your eye. I end up changing it later to one inch tall. The next thing I did was play with several fonts, and I used system fonts that I had for the most part. I wanted to show you this cool website called wordmark.it. Some of you may have seen it before, but you just put in the words that you plan to use, and then it shows you what that word looks like in all of the different fonts you have on your computer. So then you can select the ones that you think you're gonna like and then filter them. And so now this is showing just the three that I filtered down. And then I went into design space and I tried those three. So you're gonna go to your fonts. You're going to click at the top, across the top. You have the choices and you wanna choose system if you're using them from your system. And then you start typing in the word, hit enter and it'll pull up everything that's on your system because sometimes the preview in design space isn't very good so I actually ended up not liking any of the ones that I had filtered from that um, so I tried a few other ones um, some of the skinnier fonts like the last one was just a little bit too skinny I didn't think it would cut very well some fonts that are typically my go-to for a lot of things I just really didn't like for this. Um, I'm really, really picky with my fonts. So if you are too, then you are in good company. So I tried probably 
10 or 15 different fonts. I don't think I showed them all here. And then when I finally landed on this one, this is Trade Gothic LT, which is a font I never used for anything, but I liked the way that it looked here. So I wanted to get the spacing just right because sometimes it's not quite right when you just leave it up to design space. So what I did was I went up to the top under advanced and I uh, ungrouped to letters so that it was just those uh, individual numbers and I could move them side to side. Once I got the spacing right on the first one, I selected all, I duplicated, I moved it out of the way and then I changed the number on the end because I needed 2013 all the way through 2022. So over on the right panel, the right side is where the duplicate is. So I just kept doing that. Select all, duplicate, change the number, move out of the way. And then I realized that I'm going to need to attach each of these. So each of the dates Cricut is now seeing as an individual, like the 2015 is each in an individual number. So if I just go to cut, Cricut is gonna put all of these random numbers all over the place. So then I went in and I attached each year. So 2018 is attached, 2017 is attached. And that way Cricut knows to keep the 2017 together that they're not gonna put it all over randomly when you go to cut. So I had to change the spacing a little bit when I got to the 2020s, so because that two is bigger than the one, obviously, so I just adjusted it a little bit, and then I did the same thing for 2021 and 2022. I pretty much just changed that last number. That one there I moved over just a little bit because the one is skinnier than the zero. So there's a little bit of, um, you know, moving around that you're gonna have to do to make sure it's evenly spaced. Unless you're not as picky as me, then that will save you some time, <laughs> but it won't be as evenly spaced. All right, so now I've got all of my dates in and here I've got my HTV. When you put it on your mat, you need to make sure that the shiny side is down and you need to mirror the image. Now I have a bunch of scraps of white HTV that I wanted to use. So what I did was I put them on my mat strategically and then you're gonna see here in a second, I'm gonna go back into design space. When you send it to your mat, you can move each of these dates around. So as I was moving these around, I was referring to my mat, except I was doing it opposite. Because one thing I forgot to show here is once you get everything in place, you have to hit mirror image because that's the key when doing HTV because it's cutting it from the back. It's cutting the side of the HTV that's gonna be put down onto your project. So here you can see the placement is opposite of what I was doing uh, in design space on the screen. Now, once it's done cutting, you want to weed your dates. So I've got all of them cut down here. Again, the shiny side is on the bottom because that is the release paper that protects your HTV as you iron it or use your easy press tool. So I'm just trimming off the excess that I don't need because then that's a little bit less that I have to pull off but I use this little pokey tool. This is a piercing tool that I have for my paper crafting. Many of you probably have this. You can also use the weeding tool that's designed by Cricut, um, but I find that I actually prefer using this. So I use this and it does double duty and I don't need to have a separate tool just for weeding. Um, you wanna make sure you get inside the numbers, so inside the O's or the zeros and then inside the six and the nine and get all of those pieces that you don't want on your project off of there so that they don't show up on your project. So I'm doing all of these, uh, just weeding them together because it's, it saves a little bit of time doing it that way. And then I will cut them apart. So I weeded all of my dates first before I started because then they were ready for me. So now here we go. I've got all of my dates over on the side because I'm just gonna get this going in a 
um, assembly line, I've got my easy press set to 280 degrees. That is the key to this because you don't want too much heat on the faux leather. I'm showing you here that if you lay your album flat, that spine is going to get all wonky. So what you need to do is just kind of have it up and down here and hold it. And then I used a ruler to be sure I was centering it, although I ended up just kind of eyeballing the center. But what I did measure is that each date started from the same distance down from the top of the album. And then I also made sure that it was straight. And as long as you make sure it's the same distance from the top of the album going down and that it's straight, it will all look good on the shelf. If it's off a little bit going side to side, being centered, it's not so noticeable. Um, but I, again, I just eyeballed that and I think I got close enough because once you get this down, it's kind of hard to move it and make sure it's perfect. So here we go with the easy press, 280 degrees for 30 seconds. I put a thin cloth, this is just a uh, towel from my kitchen between the album and my easy press. And after 30 seconds, I peeled it off and that seemed like the perfect amount of time. It looks perfect, it feels perfect, and it's gonna stay nice and secure. If you were to use regular vinyl, not the heat transfer vinyl, I would worry that over time it would kind of ruffle up and uh, peel up. So this is going to be more permanent and it looks really, really nice on the shelf. I'd love to know in the comments if you think this is something that you would try. I hope you learned something and if you did, be sure to like this video and subscribe because I post scrapbooking videos twice a week. I've got a couple more videos listed here that you might enjoy, and if you're interested in any supplies I use, they're listed in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.